It's Adam Gorney back at the Rival Signing Day show now with Boston College coach Jeff Halfley. And Jeff, we were just talking, uh, kind of a quiet day in recruiting for you guys and, and happily, uh, but, but you had all your guys wrapped up except for probably a handful uh, by the time the season started. How nice was that and how intentional was it uh, to get some guys locked in early? Well, you, you, you'd like to get them locked in. It, it, it makes things a lot easier. At the same time, you, you want to be patient, make sure you, you keep looking for the right guys on and off the field, especially at a place like Boston College where, you know, we really have to find the right fit. Um, you know, we've had two classes so far, this being our third. So we kind of got a good feel earlier earlier this year than we had. And, um, yeah, like you said, we signed 17, which was a smaller class for us. We did, we did that intentionally. Uh, brought in six mid-year. Uh, also intentionally so we could have some room and and we hit the portal a little bit but those 17 were committed to us stayed committed to us and uh we appreciate that and a lot of those guys are here and they're off and running one of those guys that you talked highly about in december and, and talking about fit and and then i saw him at the all-american bowl in san antonio just catching ball after ball after ball was Jaden skeet how much do you did you like him early on target him and get him locked up well he he we offered him early in his sophomore year um, and he committed to us really early. And usually when you get those commitments, it's, you know, one where you got to hold on, go back and forth with other people recruiting him. Does he want to visit other places? And he's a guy that never did. Um, he stayed with us and he got better and better. And, and you saw him playing that game. He's got great length. He's got enormous hands. He's got a live body. Um, and he's such a great kid. He's smart. He's tough. You know, he played defense this year as well as offense. It's nice when you get to see a kid in your backyard practice year after year and, and win state championships two years in a row. And, um, you know, he's a kid people came after late, and we had some conversations. Uh, people wanted to official him late, and he uh, he stood true to his word. He didn't go on those visits, and he committed. And uh, I, I think he's going to be a great player. I think he's the best player in the state this year, and, and I think that will show in the next few years. I think he's going to have a really, really nice college career. Yeah, he and Detroit Jones were committed from August 2020, and, and that is almost unheard of. Usually when you get those super, super early commits, they uh, they end up taking visits, but that's just a credit to uh, to them, to you, to just just the whole system that you're running. I mean, how do you kind of see that? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a school in, um, in CM right here in our backyard. Coach Dibbs has done a great job. I think he's one of the best high school coaches in the country. Um, we have a great relationship with him and the school. We watch those kids, you know, from a young age on. They're constantly on our campus, constantly at practice, coming to all our games where they just start to feel like the family. They know the players on the team. Uh, they're, cl they're close friends. We actually took Max Tucker, another uh, defensive back from the same school. We took him late. Um, and, and that's a good story because that's a kid I watched. And I'm a DB guy in my background. At least I, I was a DB guy. I guess I'm now I'm head coach, right? But DB guy for a long time. And I watched him over and over in practice. And every time I left there, I was like, gosh, why don't I offer that kid? Um, and as it got closer to signing day, I kept watching him. I saw him live in the state championship game, playing offense and defense. He caught a touchdown right in front of me. And that weekend, I was just like, you know, with all this going on in the portal and kids can leave now, if you can get a kid in your backyard that you really like and you think he can develop and is tough and competitive, and we got to offer this kid. Um, so I picked up the phone, talked to him and his family right before signing day. No disrespect for the school that he was committed to. Uh, I don't love that. But at the same time, he's a kid in our backyard and he committed. So we took three, him, Day Day and Skeet. Um, you know, Detrell can fly, um, really can move. He's a kid that will be a running back for us. I think he play multiple positions. And then Max, I think, has a chance to be a really good DB. So really excited about those three. You've talked about something in December that I found interesting that I want you to kind of expand on it. Recruiting regionally, with especially with the portal, might be more important than ever now instead of going out um, and getting guys from all over the country, which is also important to, to pick and choose. Um, but you, you, do you get the feeling that recruiting regionally is important because those guys would be less likely to, to kind of just fly the coop? I think in some cases, yes. I mean, at BC, what I've learned is because of the academics, we're, we're a national brand. I mean, we go out to California and, you know, it's easy to walk in to a lot of those schools and they respect the academics and obviously the football and the ACC um, in, in a lot of parts of the country. And that's great. I mean, we've got students that go here from all over the country. Um, and now with the portal, it's just it's easy to leave. Right. So are you homesick your freshman year, which 
a lot of kids are. I mean, it's a normal feeling. Do, do you have doubt early in your freshman year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's days when it's really hard and you start questioning, can I do it here? Do I want to do it here? This place is way different from where I'm from. And now there's the easy way out. And um, there's some kids that are just going to leave and, and want to go home and not push through it. Uh, so I think it's really important. I've always thought it's important to really evaluate hard our backyard. Um, and don't worry about who's offering who. Continue to watch them because we can, because we can see them practice. And we can really get to know them better because they're right here. And I do believe those kids are less likely to leave, um, you know, than some of the kids that are coming from further away. So while I want to recruit nationally because we can, we need to do a great job regionally. Busy, busy in the portal, some leaving, some coming. Um, you talk a lot about fit in the portal. Is that more challenging to find the right fit for those guys? Do you like guys that have one year left or three? I mean, what's kind of your thinking in terms of that and how you're going to utilize it? One, I, I think, one, it's it's kind of hard to make sure you get that right fit because you got to really do your homework. You know, when we're recruiting these high school kids, some we know them for two years, um, some for a year, and we get to know them and their families. The portal recruiting is like two or three weeks that you got to figure everything out. So you really got to do your homework. Um, you know, to me, the culture in the locker room is so strong. I want to build this thing and developing it and develop it by recruiting high school players. That's really important to me. And that that's going to be how we win here. You know, develop our freshmen to be sophomores and juniors and go on to be great seniors and hopefully get them to stay for a fifth year if we can. Or if not, go to the National Football League. Um, wanted to hit the portal to kind of fill some holes and create some competition. Um, that we didn't have. We're, we're young. Uh, 37 of the 44 in the 2D at the end of the season were first and second year players. So I wanted to add some competition. Um, but I, at the same time, I wanted to make sure that they fit our team. I mean, I have a good pulse of who those kids in the locker room are, uh, what the type of kids that walk around this campus are. And I want to make sure that I bring the right student to Boston College as, as well as, as football player, um, which is very important to me. Yellowstone is obviously going to be brought up here because you have a kid from Montana. So we have to talk about that. And Reed Harris, definitely not a state that's going to produce a lot of division one players, but he's a big athlete. How do you kind of see him and, and how did this kind of all come together for him to come to Boston college? I saw him on film, a high academic kid uh, reached out to us. You know, it's not like we're going from school to school out in Montana, um, <laughs> though it is a pretty state. Um, just cold right now with a lot of snow where he's from a lot, a lot of snow. Um, he visited, he visited early. And when he walked in, he's an enormous athlete he's got length. He's at, he can run. He's played quarterback wide out tight end. He's a good basketball player. Um, and we really liked what he was all about. Great family. Spent a lot of time with his mom and his sister. Dad came out, um, came out a second time for a game. And the more we were around him, I mean, he showed a lot of interest. Um, and the more we watch this tape, you know, he's a guy that might start out in the wide receiver room because um, he gives us another big wide out. Uh, but you could also see him developing into a tight end as he does get bigger because he is going to be able to put on the weight. That is Boston College coach Jeff Halfley. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.